This particular unit is on solutions. So what is a solution? It's a homogeneous mixture. Uh, so when it's appeared, it, it appears in the same phase. So when it's mixed, it appears in the same phase. And there's two parts to the solution, what we call a solute and a solvent. Um, and so solute is what's dissolved, the solvent is what does the dissolving. So yesterday you did a, a, a opener where you dissolve sugar and salt and water. And so um, we added sugar to water. So sugar is your solute, water is your solvent. Okay. And when they're mixed, it's a homogeneous mixture, meaning um, um, when you mix them and then form the solution, there was no solid uh, sugar pieces that you could see that was completely um, mixed or dissolved in the solution. Okay, so what's the difference between the soluble versus insoluble? So insoluble, you create a solution. That means only one phase is present. We say that's is miscible. And then insoluble is when the, when everything doesn't dissolve. Um, so both phases are present. The solid solute is immiscible. So how does solvation or the process of dissolving work? Um, here we have a pretty good video. So here is, uh, they're calling this sodium chloride. <clears throat> sodium is, chloride is made up of sodium and chlorine atoms. So if you drop it in water, what happens is, how does dissolving work? Well, you can see the water particles are now surrounding, are now surrounding the, um, the, the particles of sodium chloride. And if you remember, um, if this is your oxygen, sodium chloride, or excuse me, water has some charges, and sodium also has charges. And so if you get enough water with the partial charges, it actually can pull away the sodium from the chlorine. It can overcome the intermolecular forces. And you can see here, there it goes, pulling it away. Now what's, what's causing it to pull away? Now, normally there's intermolecular forces between these, and that's what's holding together. So when, if you get enough water molecules Right? If you get enough water molecules, even though one water molecule, its intermolecular force is not as great, if you get enough of them, they can kind of pull them away, right? They can pull them away, and that's what dissolving is. So you basically need enough water molecules to pull everything apart uh, for um, dissolving to, to, to work or to be complete. Let's keep on looking. So you see, we call this dissociation, is when they separate, <clears throat> dissociate. So you no longer associate with somebody, you dissociate. <clears throat> Oops. And so what I want is, we want to describe what we saw in the video. What was the voices at work separating the solute particles? <clears throat> so remember, um, what we saw was, the it's the water particles uh, and their polar nature that pulls apart um, the, the, the solute, and that's in this case salt. And so as they pull apart, that's a process of dissolving. Well, what pulls them apart? Well, remember there's intermolecular forces that the water basically attracts the, um, attracts, uh, the, the, the salt particles. And when they attract, you have enough water particles to, to, to surround the, the particular um, the particular solute, 
uh, what happens is they're able to kind of pull them apart. So, um, yeah, so you can think of the analogy like you have a group of friends, and then if there's another, if there's a friend, you know, that you see passing, if you're, if you're, if you want to see that other friend strong enough, right, like intermolecular forces, or you're more connected to that other friend, you'll move away from your group and join the other friend. Right? Kind of like how water separates, is able to separate um, the solute particles. <clears throat> so, let's think, like, so, how can we increase salvation? So, salvation is a process of dissolving, so how can we increase the, the um, salvation process? Well, if we just follow a general rule, Salvation or dissolving can only occur when particles of solute can come in contact with particles of solvent, right? Like you need water, which is a solvent, to come into contact with a solute. And so if we, if, if we increase the temperature, like if we make the particles go faster, they're more likely to collide with each other, right? There's more instances of collision. And so more colliding means more possibilities for water to come into contact or the solvent to come into contact with sol the solute. So two ways. One is we can mix and we can uh, 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 or increase the temperature. Because that speeds up particles, right? And then so you get an increase in collisions. So there's it's more likely that you would have um, uh, interaction between the water or the solvent and the solute. The other one is, if you increase surface area, so remember, you took a sugar cube, which has a big surface area, you took a, um, like, smaller particles, uh, like ground sugar and powdered sugar, what you should notice is the powdered sugar and the ground sugar, um, more likely, is going to uh, dissolve faster. Why? Because... Uh, Increased surface area would decrease solvation, and and the reason is because um, if what happens is um, the block of sugar doesn't allow the the water to to get to the 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 sugar part uh, molecules that are inside the block, and so it has to only it can only come into contact with the exterior of the block and kind of slowly eat away at it, so to speak. And so uh, that would decrease salvation. And actually, I take that back because um, there, you, I would actually argue that if you increase the surface area, you actually, I, I would say that the, um, there's more surface area when it comes to the sugar, um, the granulated sugar. Why? Because um, you see all sides of the sugar particle. Um, so increased surface area, I'm gonna say, increases solvation. And why? Because uh, the water has more access uh, to the solute. Okay? All right. I put up a net puzzle for more practice.